What's up guys, Mizzo Frizzo from Pitchfork Academy here, and in this Unreal Engine 5 tutorial, I'm going to show you how to change the maximum movement speed of your character based on its direction of movement. So as you can see here, I've got this third person character. It's actually got four different max walk speeds. So for example, it's got this speed when I'm strafing. If I'm moving backwards, it can move even slower. And if I'm moving forwards, it's got its maximum max walk speed and also a diagonal max walk speed as well. So you can add as many different directions with as many different movement speeds as you like, but I've just chosen these four to demonstrate. And as a bonus, I'm going to also show you how to add a sprint mechanic that only works when you're moving in certain directions. So in this example, I have to be either moving forward or diagonally to be able to sprint, and I can release sprint and it will go back down to the usual max walk speed of that direction. And if I'm moving backwards, I will not be able to sprint but when I move forwards, I can sprint. But just before we get started, guys, I'd like to invite you all to join our free and public Discord server, The Pitchfork Academy. It's a space we've created where you guys can get together and discuss our tutorials, look for help, and mix with other like-minded people. I'll leave the invite link in the description and in the pinned comment, but without further ado, let me show you how to do this. Alrighty guys, so I'm here in my project, which is basically just the third person template in Unreal Engine 5.6. And the reason I'm going to be doing this tutorial in third person is just in case anyone wants to apply this to a third person character as opposed to a first person character. Because a first person character, when you look around, your character's rotation moves with your camera, whereas that is not necessarily always the case with a third person setup. So with the template here, obviously our character's rotation is oriented to its movement and we are going to be calculating the direction of our character's movement based on its rotation. So just quickly before we go into actually doing the direction based max walk speed stuff, I'm going to open up my third person character in third person and blueprints, BP third person character. And in the details panel, I'm going to search for your, and I'm going to check use controller rotation your, and I'm also going to search for orient and uncheck orient rotation to movement because those two settings uh, sort of conflict and fight with each other. So now if I hit play, my character will just always face wherever the camera is facing. And now we will be able to calculate which direction the character is actually moving. So let's go ahead and start setting this up. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a function which will call inside of this move function. So whenever we uh, press the input to move our character, it calls this function. And if we double click this and open it up, this uh, function just uses this node add movement input to add movement to our character. So if we call a function on the end of this, it will be called every time we press the input to move our character. So let's create a new function and we'll just call it check direction. And just before I set this up, I'm going to go back out to the move function and I'm going to make sure that I'm calling this check direction function on the end of this logic here that's inside of our move function. So I'll head back into check direction. And this is going to be pretty straightforward. Basically, the first thing we want to do is get the velocity of our character. So get velocity and we'll also get actor rotation. And we can also find a node called calculate direction. And this, as you can see, takes a velocity input and a base rotation input. And just to see what this outputs, what we can do is we can print strength and plug this in here. And now if we compile and hit play, when we move around, you'll see it will print the direction of our character, which if we're moving forward is zero. And if we start to move sort of to the left a little bit, it will go into the negatives. Uh, straight left is negative 90. Straight right is positive 90. So this is basically what you'd expect. It's negative 180 all the way around to zero. And then if you keep going around, it will go around to positive 180. 
So we can use this uh, to do some checks to check our direction and set our max walk speed. I'll just get rid of that. And then we can actually promote this to a local variable. And we'll just call this direction. And if you don't know what a local variable is, it's basically a variable uh, that is just for use within a function. So since we're, we don't actually need this anywhere else currently, we can just make it a local variable and use this to calculate our max walk speed. The first uh, speed that we'll do is when we're moving forwards. So what we'll do is we'll get our direction, our local variable, and we can get a node called in range float. And this returns a Boolean that's true if this float is within a certain range. So I'm going to just start with negative 30 to positive 30. So if we're moving plus or minus 30 degrees in a forward direction, this will be true. And we can drag off of here and press B to get a branch, plug this in here. And if this is true, then we want to set our max walk speed as whatever we want it to be when we're moving in a forward direction. So what we can do is grab our character movement component here and we can set max walk speed. And I'm actually going to put this inside of a function just because I think it's a little bit cleaner. So I'll plug this in here and then I'll right click on these and collapse to function. And I'll just call it update max speed. And if I double click and open this up and drag this input pin for the max walk speed onto this node here, we'll create an input. And then if I go back out to my check direction function, you'll see that this call to the function has this input max walk speed, and we can set that to be whatever we want. So let's uh, make these into variables. Let's create a new variable, and I'm just going to call it forward speed. You can call it whatever you like. This will be a float. I'll hit compile so that I can set a default value. And I'm going to set this to something quite high, like 800, and plug this in here. So like I said, this check direction function will be called anytime we move our character. And then uh, if this direction is plus or minus 30 degrees in a forward direction, uh, we'll update our max speed to be the forward speed that we just set to be 800. Nice. So this forward direction uh, check only needs one of these in range float nodes. But basically what I'm going to do is I'll actually copy all of these, duplicate them down here. I'm going to plug the false into here like so. But this check needs to be a little bit different uh, because we sort of have these two directions that we need to check for, which is in the negative if we're moving to the left and in the positive if we're moving to the right. So we can drag off of here and we can get an OR Boolean. Plug this in like so and duplicate this once more. Well, you don't actually need two of these. You could just plug one into both like so. Plug this in here. And then we just need to adjust the ranges on these checks. So I'm going to do a sort of diagonal move speed. I'm going to do my first check from negative 80 degrees up to negative 30 degrees. And conversely, on the positive side, I'm going to do a check from just 30 degrees, rid of that minus, up to 80 degrees. And because these 30 degrees here are sort of shared with this first check here, I'm going to uncheck include max on this one and uncheck include minimum on this one. And that basically just means if it's negative 30 or it's positive 30, it will sort of prioritize this one. It will, uh, it will give you the, the full forward speed like so. And this would probably still work fine if you didn't uncheck these, but I think this is a little bit cleaner. And then uh, now that we've done these checks, we can uh, set up another speed for our diagonal. So I'm just going to duplicate this variable here and I'll just call it diagonal speed. Hit compile and I'll change the default here to something a bit lower, like let's make it 650 for now. And then I'm just going to drag this out onto this get node and replace that get node with the diagonal speed like so. Now you can do as many or as few of these steps as you like. 
uh, but I'm going to do a forward speed, a diagonal, a strafe speed, and a kind of backwards speed. But however many you want uh, in each direction, uh, these will basically be the same. So you can just duplicate all of these nodes like so, plug the false in like so, and then you just need to change the ranges and this speed here. So the next one I'm going to do is, is a kind of strafing speed, and I'm gonna make it negative 120 up to the limit of the previous one, which is negative 80, and then this will just be positive 80 up to positive 120. And you don't need to change these checkboxes now uh, because they already sort of exclude the one that it has in common with the previous one. And just one other note on these ranges here, guys, make sure that your min is actually the lower number and your max is the higher number. Otherwise, uh, this node will not return the value that you're looking for. So if it's in the negative, obviously negative 120 up to negative 80. And then if it's in the positive 80 up to a maximum of 120, like so. And I just need to replace this one here. So I'll duplicate this and I'll just call this something like strafe speed, hit compile and change the default value to something a bit lower. Um, I'm gonna make it 400 and then replace this get node with the strafe speed. And I'll do one more for moving backwards just to sort of demonstrate this nice and clearly. Plug this one in here. And then this will be negative 180 up to negative 120. And 120 up to 180. Duplicate this strafe speed and call it backwards speed. Hit compile and change the default value, something even lower, like 250, just to accentuate this and replace this get node. And now we've got four different directions with four different speeds. So we can test that out now, hit compile and hit play and I'll full screen this. And if I move forward, I've got quite a high max speed. If I start to move diagonally, it's a bit lower. If I move to the side, it's even lower. And if I start to move backwards, its lowest. Nice. You can ignore the sort of janky blend space. This is actually based on the template from 5.6.0 and the blend space <laughs> left a little bit to be desired. They sort of rushed out uh, the templates and all the content for 5.6.0 so it's a bit janky. Um, but that all seems to be working now. And I'm just gonna show you one other quick thing you can add to this as kind of a bonus, which is the ability to sprint when you're moving forward. So when you're in the forward range, or for that matter, in any of these directions, um, if you want to set that up, it just depends on your game and how you want to set that up. But I'm gonna show you how to create an enhanced input action for sprinting that will only work in certain directions. So what we can do is, I'm just gonna back out to the event graph here, and the easiest way to find where these input actions are stored is just by double clicking on one of these and it will open this up. So I'm just gonna duplicate IA jump because it has the settings that we need. I'm gonna hit browse and browse to IA jump. Then I'm gonna hit control D to duplicate and I'll call this IA sprint. And then I just need to add this in the input folder. So I'll go up to the input folder and add this to the IMC default. So I'll open this up. I'll add one more mapping. I'll select IA Sprint. Then I'll drop down IA Sprint, hit this little keyboard icon, and then press the left shift to bind that to the left shift. I can save this now and close this, and I'll close this input action as well. I don't need this. And now we have an input action for sprinting. Now you can obviously bring up this input action IA sprint, and then you can add, uh, you know, functionality to this input action. But what I'm gonna show you now, you don't actually need to do this because we're just going to use the action value here, which is true when it is triggered and it is false when it is not triggered. So we're just going to call a node that gets this action value elsewhere in our graph. We're not actually going to put anything on this input action. 
we're just going to head into our check direction right here and you can do this a couple of ways um, so what I'm going to do here instead of just passing through the forward speed when we're moving in a forward direction I am going to get a select float and this select float takes a boolean input which if it's true it will pick whatever is in A and if it's false it will pick whatever is in B and we can literally just get the value of our IA sprint by finding this enhanced action values IA sprint this is just the boolean that is changed whether we're pressing or not pressing that sprint input and just very quickly to demonstrate this, I can put the forward speed in here like so, and I'll duplicate the diagonal speed and plug it into B, so that if we're not sprinting, we will just move the same speed as this diagonal one. So I'll hit compile and I hit play. And now we've got this same speed when we're moving forward or diagonal, but if we're moving forward and we press the left shift, we've got that increase in max speed it might be a bit hard to see uh, you can put a print string in there and print the speed just to double check that it's working if you like uh, but i can see that that's working there nice and because that check direction uh, function is called whenever you're pressing a move key um, or a button uh, input it will constantly update so i can release the left shift and it will stop sprinting like so you don't necessarily need to hard code a sort of different speed for your sprinting here. I'll show you one other thing you can do here, which is basically just multiplying these speeds so that you could have a sort of sprint function for the different directions and different multipliers if you like. And basically what that would look like is just plugging the forward speed into B and then for the A, which is if IA sprint is true, we could do something like multiply this by 1.25 so it's 25 percent higher and you could uh, in theory do this for all of these different speeds like so plug that in there and that in there and so on and so forth you could do it with all of these if you like you could change the multiplier in different directions so that you know maybe this just multiplies this by 1.1 or something like that um, whatever you like but this will all be working now so I'll hit compile and save and hit play and now uh, if we're moving forward I can sprint I can also move in a diagonal direction and if I hit sprint it will multiply that speed that one's going to be very hard to see because it's only 1.1 um, but that is all working now and that's all we set out to do today guys just a quick one uh, because there was someone in the discord asking about how to change the move speed based on the direction of your character and this I think is the cleanest and best way to do so. So if this video has been of any use or value to you whatsoever please hit like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one.